know about you, but I am grateful to God for all that the Lord has done and is doing. Uh, because of our gratefulness to our God, we will jump right into the word of God. Turn with me to 1 Kings chapter 18, beginning with verse number 30. 1 Kings chapter 18, beginning with verse number 30. Thank God for all of the uh, ministers uh, here at Mount Carmel, for uh, the officials of our, this church, deacons, trustees, for all of you who are in place. Thank God for this praise team who has ministered and lifted. I don't know about anybody else. They lifted my spirit today. Amen. So I praise God for each and every one of them. First Kings, first Kings chapter 18, beginning with verse number 30. The New Revised Standard Version of the Bible renders this ancient text as follows. Then Elijah said to all the people, come closer to me. And all the people came closer to him. First, he repaired the altar of the Lord that had been thrown down. Elijah took 12 stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, to whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be your name. With the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord. Then he made a trench around the altar, large enough to contain two measures of seed. Next he put the wood in order cut the bull in pieces and laid it on the wood. He said, fill four jars with water and pour it on the burnt offering and on the wood. Then he said, do it a second time. And they did it a second time. Again, he said, do it a third time. And they did it a third time. So that the water ran all around the altar and filled the trench also with water. At the time of the offering of the oblation, the prophet Elijah came near and said, O Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant and that I have done all these things at your bidding. Answer me, O Lord, answer me, so that this people may know that you, O Lord, are God, and that you have turned their hearts back. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt offering, the wood, the stones, and the dust, and even licked up the water that was in the trench. When all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and said, indeed, the Lord is God. The Lord indeed is God. Turn around, look at your neighbor, smile at them and share these words with them. Miracles at Mount Carmel. Miracles at Mount Carmel. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to preach and teach for a few moments as the Lord shall guide miracles at Mount Carmel. Beloved, Donald Lawrence and the Tri-City Singers have a song that's been around for many years entitled, I Believe in Miracles. Man in all his facts, he tends not to react. He simply just can't believe in things he cannot see. But I know God is real and his love I surely feel. I believe in miracles. Lord, I believe in miracles. A blind man stood by the side of the road. Jesus came and he asked, man, what is your need? He said, I'm blind, Lord. I just want to see. He said, I believe 
in miracles. I believe in miracles. Yes, we are living in a time and day and age where science and technology rules all throughout the world. We are seeing, uh, we know that seeing is believing. And if you engage in any type of social media outlets, as soon as you hit sand, you cannot pull back what has been typed what has been said, what has been spoken or declared, but I believe God can make something out of nothing. So right now, I've come to declare and to decree, I believe in miracles. I believe in miracles. I believe in the miracles that God performs in terms of healing someone's body. I believe in the miracles that God performs by saving someone's soul. I believe in the miracles that when a doctor may give a terminal report that God can still come in and extend the life of that individual. I believe that even with our credit being jacked up at times, that God can still come through, regulate things, put us back on track, and make sure that we can experience the miracles that only God can perform. Every now and then, God still works miracles in the midst of everything, all that's going on. I believe in miracles, in social unrest. I still believe in miracles, in the midst of discrimination and injustice, I still believe in miracles. In the midst of a court that's called supreme, that's stacked against black and brown people that look like us, I still believe in miracles. In the midst of gentrification, I believe in miracles. In the midst of classism, I believe in miracles. In the midst of racism, I believe in miracles. In the midst of all types of isms that are all over this world, I still believe in miracles. They be saying, well, preacher, why do you believe in miracles? I believe in miracles because a miracle is a surprising and welcomed event that is not explicable by natural or scientific laws. Therefore, it is considered to be the work of the divine. And I've stopped by this day to encourage us under the sound of my voice and those who are watching online that God has worked miracles in my life. God has provided some healing in my body. God has provided some healing in my mind. God has provided some sanity in my mind. God has provided some healing and some miracles even when I did not have the money to pay for the education that God called me and told me to go ahead and pursue God work a miracle on my behalf when it seemed like I did not have everything in order and scholarship season was come and gone and it said that the money had run out the Lord found a way to work a miracle on my behalf and if God can do that for me I declare that God can do the same thing for you miracles miracles at Mount Carmel it's 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 all in the text because take some time read the entire 18th chapter of first Kings we know it opens up with Ahab who was king at the time and he called uh, Ahab and Jezebel they were running things and they were doing all that they were gifted they were big enough bad enough and bold enough to do they had put uh, people on the run Elijah the prophet of Almighty God was doing what God had called him to do but they called on their 400 Baal which signified that they were calling all of them for a big showdown in the midst and that even in the midst of Mount Carmel the holy mountain of God Mount Carmel the place where God had engaged in ritual and activity for a long time Mount Carmel in Egyptian tradition they had said that this was a holy place and even now in Christian tradition it's still a holy place. God met you Mount Carmel the place where God God came and got you. Mount Carmel, the place elevated and high and lifted up. But God came down from the valley and picked us up. But understand that even though we may be dwelling in the valley, at one point we are not called to live. And he called us to be on top of the mountain. He called us to be up high. He called us to be up high so that we can see what's going on down in the valley and offer ourselves to go and to help what's going on in the valley. Mount Carmel. 
Mount Carmel, sanctified in the early days. It's called a high and holy mountain. In Egyptian uh, records, it was a place that was a high place that they used as a place for worship of their gods in Egypt. But in the Bible, it helps us to understand that Mount Carmel is also the place where God came in to make a difference in the lives of, of Israel. It was on Mount Carmel. Speak to Elijah and my purpose and for my call. I know what the Egyptians said. I know what the Phoenicians said. I know they said. I know all of those things. I know how they are sacrificed to I on this mountain but God said I'm placing my feet right now in the midst of you Eli is now belonging to God look at we understand experience mount or miracles at Mount Carmel God wants us to experience uh, we experience miracles at Mount Carmel because we in verse 30 and 32 of thrill shall be uh, by those who have no let me say that one more time in repairs we engage in the precision of repairs God will help us to understand precise of the Lord he told him to get 12 stones and once you go and get 12 stones, they make sure that they, and all we understand is this, that each one of us, we've been, that God is calling you to go and get a stone and set up a brand new altar on a full to help deliver theirs that are precise. Second says, next, he put pieces and laid it on the wood. He said, fill four jars with water and pour it on the burnt offering and the wood. Then he said, do it a second time. They did it again. Again, he said, do it a third time. Water ran all the way around the altar and filled the trench also with water. We've got to be ritualistically positioned. In other words, what that means is if you've been called to serve, be in your place at the appointed time. If you've been called to lead, be in your place at the appointed time. Be positioned where God says you are called to be positioned. Be in the place so that you can be used by God for the glory of his work and the expansion of his kingdom on earth. So put the wood in order. Back in the old church, uh, I know this church has been around since 1876, I believe, but back in the old church, come around circa 1900, they would be able to have those, uh, we call them praise and worship leaders now, but they called them devotion leaders back in the day, where somebody would start to stomp their foot on what may have been a wood or a dirt floor, and they stomp their foot and began to line some songs that would usher us into the presence of Almighty God. They were in position. And all we have to do is make sure that we are in position. The Bible says, put the wood in order. Then cut up the bull in pieces. Don't cut the bull up after or before you put the wood in order, but put the wood in order so that when you cut the bull, you'll be able to lay it on the altar and it'll be in position. God wants us to understand that we have got to be laid on the altar. We've got to be laid on the altar. Let me drop it this way. Uh, I'll testify myself. There are times when the Lord had to cut me up. I was the bull of sacrifice that the Lord had to cut me up into pieces, cut away some envy, cut away some jealousy, cut away some uh, attitude that was not appropriate, cut away some things that I was saying that I should not have said, cut away some things that I was thinking that I should not have been thinking. The Lord cut it all away and put me on the altar. And when he put me on the altar, he then took the water of the Holy Ghost and began to pour the water on top of me. He poured that water on me so he could heal my wounds after having been cut. And then he said, pour the water on him. Then he said, do it again. Came back, did it again. He said, do it one more time. Came back, did it a third time. So much so that the water ran all the way down and filled the trench that was dug around the altar. Had I not been in position, 
I would not have been the recipient of what God was doing in the purification and the cleansing process. And all I'm really trying to say is Mount Carmel, you are in position with all of the development. You're in position. Stay in position and watch God unfold and manifest miracles in your very eyesight. Stay in position and watch God open up the floodgates and pour out blessings that we don't have room to receive. Watch God do what God can do.